Hello, marketing class. Uh, I think it's going to be a quick one today. We're on to the third part of chapter 19. We're going to talk about broadcast media. So what are our objectives for this part of the chapter? So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to define and describe the characteristics of broadcast media and also be able to explain what are the pros and cons of television advertising and additionally, what are the pros and cons of radio advertising? So 19.2 or second part of chapter 19, we talked all about print media. This gets us into broadcast media. Okay, so broadcast media. This includes radio and television. So just by definition, just think of it as broadcast. It is broadcast out to people. All right. So and it differs very fundamentally from print media because while the print media is sort of sent out, it's emitted to the target audience, it sort of has to be received. It has to be read because it is in print form. Broadcast media is a little bit different. It's almost involuntary. I mean, if there's, you know, sound and uh, sights coming at you, it's it's much easier for people to take it in. They have to make a conscious decision to actually um, read print materials, um, you know, print advertisements. So it does differ very fundamentally in that way. And also, if you think about uh, the different um, ways in which humans interact with the different kinds of media, I mean, print, um, there are certain advantages because humans are, it's what's called tactile. Uh, humans like to, to touch and feel and see and hold things. And that sort of gives things a sense of durability and, and you know, the, it, almost like it's there as opposed to it not. I mean, you can hear about something all day long, but until you see it, touch it, feel it, uh, that really adds something to, you know, whatever it is you're, you're dealing with. Um, broadcast media is a little bit different. You lose that sort of tactile essence, but you do gain many more or interaction with more of the senses. You know, you can hear things, you can see things, sights and sounds. I mean, there are different ways that you can use those to your advantage when you're an advertiser. So here's a statistic that might be uh, interesting to you guys. Uh, so over a 70 year period, the average person watches 10 years of television. So almost one seventh of your life you spend watching television. I'd be interested in the statistic of how long you spend looking at your phones. Um, I would probably beg to differ that you probably spend more time on your phone than you do watching TV nowadays. Um, but anyways, um, and also almost six years listening to the radio. So this gets us into uh, television advertising. Let's start with that. So television advertising is highly effective because, as I mentioned before, it combines more sensory perceptors. It combines sight, sound, action, and color to create impactful messages. Um, you can do a lot more because you're interacting with many more of the senses as an advertiser. You want them to see certain things and certain sites, uh, seeing certain images give you a certain perception of products or whatever it is you're advertising. Uh, and also a huge pro of television advertising is that advertisers can target demographics. So they can target demographics based on the time of broadcast. Um, I mean, if you're going to advertise to, I mean, really generally only adults are up, you know, late at night past, you know, uh, 9, 10, 11, midnight. So depending on what you're advertising, you can choose a different time of broadcast to reach a certain target audience or to at least um, decrease people who are not in your target audience. So yes, of course, daytime, uh, there's late night and prime time. And as you would imagine, um, advertisers spend different amounts of money. Um, I mean, prices for daytime ads on television, daytime commercials, drastically vary from late night ads and primetime ads. Primetime is, of course, I believe primetime goes from, I think it's six to like eight 30, maybe just six to eight. Um, I'm not positive on that time frame, but it's nighttime when people are home from work. Typically remember when people used to go to work. Yeah, that was cool. Um, 
so yeah, prime time is when people are home from work. They're typically you know, either eating dinner, have eaten dinner already, and it's before bedtime. That's when the most people are tuning into television shows. So advertisers spend the most money and networks charge the most money to advertise during that time. Advertisers can also target demographics based on content. So for example, um, you can choose to advertise during a children's show. If you're, you know, it's, we used to watch Saturday morning cartoons when I was a kid. It's back when you had to actually tune in when something was on television. You couldn't just go to Netflix and, you know, choose to watch it whenever you wanted to watch it. Uh, but that allowed advertisers to target those kids at that time. Uh, news shows, typically adults are watching the news, so you can target adults. And I mean, think of the myriad other things that you can, or different types of content that are on television shows. I mean, I watch, you know, different, you know, again, remember when there used to be sports? Uh, that was cool. Um, so if there's, you know, a football game on, you see beer commercials all the time. Um, if you're watching, uh, you know, I watch like shows about cars and like fixing cars and things like that. So you're inevitably going to see um, commercials for, you know, auto parts stores and different motor oils and all that kind of stuff. You can, so advertisers target their audience based on the content of the show that's being broadcast. However, a, a major con of television advertising, it is, it is very expensive. It's expensive in two different ways. Um, but I'll get to that in a second, but it's, it's cost prohibitive to small business. That's why you don't see a ton of, you know, mom and pop commercials, you know, the, the gas station down the street, you're not going to see a commercial for it. The diner in the center of town, you're not going to see a commercial on it during the Super Bowl. It's just, it's not going to happen. For example, a 30 second Super Bowl commercial ad costs about $5 million. Now that's not from this year. That's from last year. So it very well may have gone up. Um, but yeah, it's extremely expensive. So, and to note one more aspect of why television advertising is expensive, because one, it's just the, the placement cost. I mean, networks charge money. Uh, they know when people are watching, so you can, you know, you have to pay a lot more to place commercials when the most people are watching, like the Super Bowl, during prime time, during the most you know popular shows. Uh, but also there's production value. The production costs of television are extremely expensive. I mean, you need directors, you need actors, you need scripts, um, you know, you need to be on set. There's, you gotta pay camera people. I mean, lots and lots of things that don't exist when you're talking about uh, print media or even radio or, or many other types of advertising. So just from a pure production value perspective, it's also much more expensive. All right, this gets us into radio advertising. So you can think of this as a pro or a con, uh, but there are more than 10,000 radio stations. Um, so, you know, that the frequency on your dial, every one of those has the potential to be a different radio station. And because of limitations of the, the, the broadcast range of radio, you know, uh, WAF, maybe you guys listen to that. It's a Boston um, show that recently went off the air, but it was 107.3 was the radio frequency that was um, transmitted out of the Boston area. Recently went off the air, uh, but that 107.3 in a different city, is a different radio station. So all across the country, that same station might be different shows or might be different, you know, radio programs because of that, you know, narrow broadcast width. Uh, so consider that as well. But there are a lot of different radio stations, many, 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 many. And a big pro is that it reaches a wide audience. Um, a lot of people have radio. I mean, everybody who has a car has a radio. They may not choose to put it on, but they have a radio. Radio waves throughout the world reach 96% of the population. So television cannot claim that. I'm not sure what the television statistics are, but I'd be surprised if it were much more than 50 to 60%, maybe even less. Um, a lot of people can't afford televisions, don't have televisions. 
but radio waves reach the vast majority of the populations. You'd have to be you know, in the middle of the Sahara Desert, and, and then maybe you won't get any radio stations. Uh, pro is that it is very cost effective as well. It's a lot cheaper than television. Um, another pro is that it has the immediacy of TV, but it doesn't have the production cost. So you're getting that sort of, you know, broadcast message out immediately, um, but it doesn't cost as much. You get a little bit of studio time in there. You need voice actors. You need to produce a script. There's, there's that sort of stuff, but nowhere near the cost of creating a television commercial. But a major con is that you do not have visual images. Um, I mean, you guys have probably you know, heard a bit about this, but um, there are people who are you know, visual learners. I'm a visual learner. I need to be able to see something in order to really understand it. Um, you don't have that with television. You can only explain something to someone. You're only really getting you know, audio. Uh, you can't show them anything. So that is a major drawback. So when you're trying to advertise a product, it is extremely valuable to be able to show someone what it is. I mean, the ideal situation is being right in front of someone and having your product in your hands and handing it to them so you can see it, touch it, feel it, interact with it. Um, of course, television, you can't even do that, but you can at least see what it is. Uh, radio, you lose that, and that is a major con. Uh, another significant con of radio advertising, uh, and this goes for television as well, but it has very short lifespan. I mean, it's only there for the time that it's there. Um, you know, it's, if it's a 30 second spot, you've got 30 seconds to make your point and then gone forever. Um, of course, unlike print media where it exists as long as someone has access to it. All right. So that's all I want to cover today. We're going to get into digital media, um, in the next, uh, video, but let's review the objectives. So. First off, I would like you guys to define broadcast media. What is it? How is it different from print media? And describe the characteristics of broadcast media. Secondly, what are the pros and cons of television advertising? What are the good things about it uh, relative to the other cons we've learned about, relative to print, relative to radio? And what are the cons of television advertising? Again, relative to print, relative to um, radio. And finally, what are the pros of radio advertising relative to print and television? And what are the cons of radio advertising relative to television and print media? All right, so short one today. Uh, answer these questions. Uh, let me know if you have any questions of your own, and I'll talk to you guys soon when we're getting to digital media. Thanks. Bye.